Hello and good evening, everybody. FC Racers here, and we are back with another exciting Celeste Any Percent Leg Reese. Wow, I butchered that all the way to back. <laughs> A Celeste Any Percent League race. There we go. <laughs> Today we've got Noble TGH going against Scrub Lord. And um, if that was enough for you, we actually have another match coming up right after this race between Chai Kitty and Evans Fight. But we're not going to get ahead of ourselves here. We're going to go ahead and get this one underway here. Both runners are getting set. Just a quick recap for you guys in case you're wondering about standings. TGH is currently with four points. And Scrubblord has won against his one race against Malay. Um, if you get a chance, definitely check out that bot because that was a hot one. Um... Throughout the race, I'm going to do my best to provide some stats for you guys because everybody loves stats. I mean, come on. You know, in case someone's out there doing a, a Celeste Fantasy League, if that's your cup of tea. But again, as usual, you, the format here is three races. And it's not there is a best of set, but each race is awarded one point, and then the victor will get a bonus. So four points are up for grabs. And we are going to get this one up and running here in just one moment all right and we are off now again we're jumping into prologue here Nothing too much to write home about here. Just going to go over some basic movement here. So Madeline can jump, can climb, and we'll be able to dash. Now, we're not going to see that great cutscene at the end of this because the developers were nice enough to let us skip that entirely. Um, one thing to be worried about is actually retrying on accident, uh, getting ahead of yourself. I will not say that it's happened to me. Cough, cough, it has. <laughs> but both runners are able to get away with that scot free, and they're diving right into city. Now, city's going to showcase uh, basically the majority of the tech that we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of wall bounces, we're going to see a lot of hypers, an ultra or two, and some corner boosts. So. And as I've stated many times before, particularly at this high level of a race, City and Old Sight, the first two chapters of the game, you're not going to see too much of a separation between the runners. Uh, they're overall pretty tight. We'll probably maybe see like a few seconds here or there. And then, you know, there could be some mishaps as well. For example, TGH not getting a wall bounce there. We're able to get that ultra into corner boost. Scrub Lord actually does not go for that strat. So we'll see a little bit of a difference here. And then again, folks, as always, we are going off of in-game timer. TJ's taking a death in this room on scoreboard to slowly inch ahead, but TJ's not too far behind. Oh, Scrublord missing his dash there. Actually, he didn't miss that. My bad. He dashed right through that concrete. Melon must have had her Flintstone Kid vitamins and just got a little too strong. Tej coming out of city with a total time of 136 and scrub would look to be at a 139 so we have three second difference folks already off the bat now some fun stats here as we move into old site scrub lord's best chapter was old site from the previous uh race and then tj's not surprisingly was summit so there's a chance that scrub lord could pull ahead here but we have a lot of levels to go through so definitely hold tight Anything can happen. Oh, Scrubble taking a death. Not getting his dash back there. As Tej is moving ahead, Dream Blocks are activated for him. Scrubble not getting his Dream Blocks activated as well. And they're in a race to go find Battlein. Just not too far. I make it sound like it's some kind of like maze or something, but it's just a literal line. And TJ has found her. Now, Battlein is basically going to mimic all of the runner's moves on a three second delay. And they want to do the best they can to provide a route so that we don't really cross paths with her because it is going to result in the death. And so now we got these key switches too. For those kind of things, the the mechanic is once you activate all of them, a uh, particular block will move out of the way. Let me see Teach flying through here. 
one last screen in the battle and fight. Scroke Lord, not too far off. You can see some nice dashing through this little maze, quote unquote. Now this one is a little tricky for casuals because you have five battle and it's chasing you. Tease is going to get out at what looks to be a 113, I think it was. My viewing screen is just a little tiny. Yeah, 113. Scorpio Lord coming out of the battle and fight at a 118 and they're both heading into a wake. Now with the wake, no hazards here, at least lethal ones. But the terrain is very uneven. Runners are going to have to try to do their best to optimize the movement. Okay, was that a double Ultra Teach? I see you. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Zooming through. It's like the whole platform is just flat for him. It's crazy. That was very excellent. Maybe with a little slight bonk at the end, but you know what? I still would give it a 9.7 out of 10. Scoreboard getting a little caught up, though, on that last pillar. And he is out as well as we move into a resort. Now, this is where... All the drama comes down. Resort basically is like that that level that's like, okay, you got the basics down. Now we're gonna start throwing the game at you for real. This level is longer than city and old site combined. We've got cycles to deal with our dust bunnies. There's a lot longer rooms and um, just a lot of mayhem. Also a really cool trick. I'm pretty sure if you've tuned in before, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and that is the demo dash. That's going to happen a little ways in once we get to Elevator Shaft, but in the meantime, we're going to talk about our run towards huge mess here. Teach getting his key off the bat. Some nice movement here. We're going to see a wall bounce. Oh, got a little too early there, but able to adjust accordingly. That is one of the big things. The optimal strat for that room is that wall bounce, but it's really important for runners to try and have a backup on hand, or in some cases, just totally improv it, <laughs> as we'll see like in the, the Ashira fight. But it's important to have that, especially with Cycles too. Um, the way that it works is Cycles go, you know, they activate as soon as you enter a room. Uh, unfortunately, with the death, it causes an animation to respawn. So the cycle starts immediately, and then you gain control about a second and a half later. And it just changes things up just a little bit. So sometimes you're going to want to know both strats and teach that moving. Oh my gosh. Let's talk about that maze real quick. That maze is just full of nooks and crannies that Madeline's got to wedge her way on through. Teach handled that very nicely. It looked really optimizing. Chris Scrub Lord also kind of going through a little more um, an aggressive style, but still makes it out nice and clean. And now we're in the huge mess portion where Madeline and the runners are going to try their best to tidy the old hotel up. Now we've got three of these jello encased items we've got the the crates the books and the towels uh we have a set order for those and the reason we do that is because once we leave oshiro is as close as possible as we head to the next section um but you are able to do this at you know any way you want to and it actually kind of modifies the difficulty a little bit for example i think if you do crates last uh one of the rooms is actually really really hard <laughs> oh no scrubbler taking a death here on the books Runs running out of stamina, and TJ's getting his book section done too. Getting ready for this towel section now. This section's a little dicey. We're gonna have some important uh, cycle skips here. We're gonna watch Teach just not even worry about those dust bunnies. My God, I need to learn that. And then we have this other screen here as Scrub Lord is getting ready for his. I'm gonna see if he's gonna go for this wall bounce. He is going for it. Nice cycle skip, Teach. Let's go. Hitting that at about a 241, making an excellent time here. Scrub Lord doing the more uh, the intended route where you wait for the dust bunnies to go up and you kind of just do a nice wave dash slash bunny hop to clear that screen. And he also goes for the this wall bounce strat there, getting that too. As Tej is already in elevator shaft, missing the key, you're gonna have to readjust here. Nice, nice adjustment there. Scrub Lord getting ready to take part on that too. And now, as I mentioned earlier, we are moving in to the demo dash. Now, as far as I know, only one runner has gone checkpoint list for this. So I want to see if they're going to go for the gusto here. Let me see. Now, Tej is going to opt for that checkpoint. Lining up and, oh, missing that first shot. He's going to have to try it again here. Getting it second try. And now Scrub Lord getting lined up for that too. So let me break down demo dash for you guys in case you're new or haven't been around for a while. So demo, actually, Scrub Lord's got an interesting strat. Oh, no, hold on, hold the phone. Looks like someone did their homework. It's going for the 
normal strat here, but running into a little bit of a hang-up. Let's see, three, four, five. Oh no. Oh no, Scarf Lord. Come on, you got this. There we go. There we go. So as I was saying, we have a thing called Demo Dash where if you crouch and dash and within form frames, press another direction, Madeline will maintain her crouching hitbox. And it just so happens that little pillar of dust bunnies that both runners pass through, there's a four pixel gap there. So with the proper setup and everything else, um, it's possible to shave off a nice 10 to 12 seconds, depending on how fast your quad hyper room is. And in that whole banter that I explained, TGH is already out of resort. Let's go. I didn't even catch that time, but it had to be very quick. Score web lord. Now a few screens away as we head into Golden Ridge. And so far so good. Score up lord about a screen and a half until he's out. We got this long Oshiro room. As long as everything goes smooth, this room is not that hard with the route that people have. It's when you, when and if you encounter a death. That's when things get crazy. It's not gonna happen to Scrub Lord today. He's gonna come out of there. It looked like a 451, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check. Yeah, 451. Now both runners in Golden Ridge. Um, I'm very adamant about this chapter. I don't like it, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Um, I feel that, and I can say this with much confidence, I feel that Golden Ridge is probably the most quote-unquote technical chapter out of the first six. Uh, that is mainly because every room pretty much just has a nice setup to shave time off and not go the intended route, mainly with these auto-scroller blocks here. Tejas is handling and showcasing that very nicely as we get into the first big auto-scroller skip on Tejas' screen. We're going to see if he's going to go for the ultra. It looks like he's lining himself up. And he makes it. That is the most optimal. Now, there are two other strats for that as well. Um, I believe oh, Scrub Lord will go for that ultra as well. But there's also a bunny hop version and then just a regular hyper. But both are way faster than just carrying that, um, holding onto that block and moving forward. Like I said, every room has just the chance to really just shave seconds off. Like, look at this. You're supposed to ride all four of these blocks. Tej only does half of them. He's just, you know, he's just doing that doing half the work half the work with half the time spent and now scrub lord oh wait a minute oh my god scrub lord is going with the blockless auto score let's go oh second try come on you got this sorry teach i'm gonna put you on hold because i'm trying to see this come on scrub lord i want to see it oh no he's opting to take the block that's a smart move though i will respect the play i respect the effort and there he goes nicely that's one of the big things that I've seen overall in the race entirely. I've seen a lot of runners, if they miss up on a particular strat, they will try to go for it. Speaking of which, TGH not activating the block there. I'm not sure if that was intended or not, but was able to get that set up again. But as I was saying, um, some runners will just kind of get into that stubborn mode where like, no, I can do this trick. I can do this trick. I'm going to do it. Sometimes it just pays where if you mess it up, you just like, hey, we're going to get it next time. Pick yourself up and try again. I believe a, an R&B artist said that, but I'm not going to name that because I'm not ha trying to have Twitch come after speedrun. <laughs> All right, Teej is heading onto the last screen here as Scrub Lord is now on the second auto scroller. Getting that. He's very close to getting the cliff face here, which is the last section. TJ is going to clock in at a very nice time of... Drum roll, please. Looks like a 249, if I'm not mistaken. Scrub Lord off cycle now with the win, able to recover, but had to hold his guns there for a little bit. And now he is in cliff face as well. Now Tej is heading into Mirror Temple. Um, real quick, for those of you that might not be aware, with the game is decide, designed, excuse me, where as long as a player finishes any sort of the chapter, they will unlock the next one. So we have the B-sides. Just so happens, folks, that if you or the B side is now faster than completing the entire A side. So runners, actually pretty much everybody that's in the league is going for this route. And basically what it is, we're gonna go grab this tape and it takes, I uh, optimally, we're looking at about, I would say a, a 111 to 1, 
13 times from these runners. All right, yeet set up. Oh, missing the yeet. That's okay. He's got backups. Got a half of one there. That's fine. And now Scrub Lord is getting out of Golden Ridge and ending in Temple himself. But yes, Tej is still on fantastic pace here. Even minus that yeet. That half a yeet. As he heads into the tape room here. Now we're going to see him try to skip this too. So we're going to hurry up and try to get to that pink block. He gets it. That is a huge time save because that is on a cycle. And basically you have to wait. Even without getting the yeet. Teach getting a 112. Holy smokes. That is very impressive. As he moves into five. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, mishap there. <laughs> Heading back into 5A on accident there. It happens. The menuing is a little wonky when you um, are going for the B-side because it doesn't actually set you up. Same thing when you go into chapter six from leaving the B-side. It doesn't do the whole like uh, cinematic thing that they have. Instead, you have to go back and then manually select it and everything else. It looks like Scrub Lord also missed Yeet as well, but you know, that's okay. Yeet is a difficult trick, in my opinion. Teach going for bump stop, getting it first try here. Scoreboard running into a little mishap as he's trying to work his way towards his tape. Oh, hitting that spring too. Springs uh, pretty much bring all of M Madeline's momentum to a halt. Also, what's up, Kagan? How you doing? Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And then we see on Scoreboard's screen there, he actually did not get... I don't think he got the fast cycle. Sorry, I pulled away and was looking at check. <laughs> Um, if you give me a quick second, Kagan, I can double check that Scrub Lord's PB. I want to say it's a 30-ish and some change. But we'll find out. Oh, I got Evans in the chat too, so I'll let him I'll let him handle that. But we got TJH going into the in the mirror portion. Or we like to call it uh, unraveling because that's what the 5A uh, name of it is. So we're going to see this. This is where Seekers are really coming into play. Oh, nice. Nice with that coin there. Seekers are able to activate those coin switches either by running into them themselves or by an explosion. It should be noted that I know they can't collide with them uh, in the console version. I'm not 100% sure if the explosions will take care of it. I can't remember. But hopefully that will uh, all change when all of the versions of Celeste get squared up when the DLC release. Alright, so Theo about to get into the Seeker Gauntlet room. This thing, this room is crazy. You got basically a one-on-one -on -one battle between Seekers. And you want to hit these switches to open up those things. The last one, you got to do a little bit of basketball here. But Madeline shooting the J and making it look so easy. Actually, Madeline and TGH. Should say with TGH with the assist. <laughs> or the alley oop. All right, now Scrub Lord heading into In the Mirror as well. All right, getting this ultra set up here for this tape room. TGH is out. Looks like a 224. And now Scrub Lord taking on the second half of 5B as well. Nice diagonal dashes from Scrub Lord. I love those diagonal dashes. They are, in some instances, they're a, a little faster than just kind of free-falling, but it's very risky. Scrub Lord making this look nice as TJ is now heading into his reflection. Scrub Lord opting for a different strat here. He's going to time this right. Ooh, makes it. So we saw TJ actually use the Seeker's explosion to, so he can keep his dash. And what that basically will allow him, allowed him to do is to pretty much manipulate the Seeker to where he wanted it to land. Uh, Scrub Lord went a different route where he did not have the dash, so it falls a little more timing and might get a little crazy here. And actually, we're seeing both runners having different strats here for these uh, gauntlet rooms. Scrub Lord coming out nicely. I'm going to assume that Tej got Lake Skip because I was looking at Scrub Lord's screen. I didn't, it looks like he's on pace with that right now. As he heads into hollows here. Now hollows in reflection. You're looking at a maze kind of setup. Where players are given the option of doing two different routes here. And um, for the most part. We're going to take. I think we're taking the top route. Almost the entire time. Maybe even the entire time. I'm not sure. Oh Teach not getting his hyper there. Going to have to readjust and use that bumper for a nice boost. 
And yeah, we also have bumpers. And we're going to have these Kevin blocks in here too. Ooh. Ooh. Flirting with death there, Tej. Oh my gosh. That one almost took a, took a nap on those spikes there, but was able to grab that ledge and hold on for dear life. All right, we're going to see if Scarf Lord is going to nail his leg skip as well. Is Tej now moving through? We also have these feathers here. Um... One thing to note, because we do have runners that both run on keyboard and on controller, feathers are omnidirectional, which means that, you know, if you have an analog stick on your controller, you are better able to control the movement. You, excuse me. <laughs> um, on keyboard, it's a little trickier. So in this instance, at least in the late game, controller is going to have a very slight advantage. Oh, Tej not getting enough oomph out of that feather. Going to have to restart here and be on a different cycle. Still opting for, oh, no, backup strat there. I know he's been working on a different strat in that room. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see it in the remainder of the of the race here. But now Teach heading into Ravine. And Scrub Lord getting a little hang, hung up here on this Kevin Block section. Didn't get the momentum that he wanted off of that big boy. But now he's going to take on the smaller version here and move along. All right, now Teach is in Ravine. I didn't even get the chance to talk about it because he flew through it so quickly, as all the runners do. <laughs> but there are three de developer intended. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That <laughs> Madeline was just like, "Look, I need to take a breather, Teach. You're making me run a little too fast here. Can we just take a moment?" And Teach is like, "No, I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go." <laughs> He's gonna get that battle boost too. I'm running out of time to talk about this tech because Teach and Scrub Lord are blaring through these sections here. But as I said with Ravine, there are three intended uh, shortcuts from the developer. It is a little risky because if you take a death, you have to start from the beginning. Now, there are checkpoints, but ideally, you just want to do a go for the gusto kind of moment. And now Tej is in the battle and fight. Now, I'll briefly talk about the battle and fight here. For the most part, this is extremely optimized, folks. The routes are going to be about the same. The big thing that is going to come about this is we want to do this as clean as possible. Make sure we don't get corner bopped and make sure we get all our ultras in our wall bounces. I mean, pretty much just like the rest of the run, but other than that, this one is, this section is so iconic for the game. It's like, you know, if you don't know about it, go play the game and get to know about this. We're gonna see this lovely strat here. Mmm, mmm, this is so good. It looks so clean, I love it, I love it so much. I'm actually trying to incorporate that in my own run. But yeah, ideally, um. I prefer to just kind of let the game go <laughs> at this point because it's such an entertaining fight to see. But now Scrub Lord getting out of Ravine and getting ready for his battle and boost. Now I actually will talk about this since I don't have the opportunity to. Oh! Scrub Lord nipping that spike there. Gonna have to do this room all over again. Doing a risky strat, hypering on the ground there. Now you can hyper underwater, which um, doesn't seem like it would make sense, but somehow it does. And Teach is entering the second round here. Now, battle and boost. We're going to do a bunny hop off this uh, Kevin block and carry that momentum all the way into the next screen with another bunny hop. And it saves a good amount of time. You basically thread the needle through there and skip, like, all this little nonsense. All right. So now both runners are in their fights, respectively. Teach having a little hang-up in that one room where you have to basically trust the block to fling you over. Um, also running into a little issue here, too. So otherwise, very clean run. He's about two screens out. We got these two long rooms coming. <gasps> oh my gosh! Getting a little uh, eager there. Wanting to hurry up and get to the next section, but you have to tag battle in before you move forward, folks. All right, Teach got this bumper boost here. Nice. Oh, gonna have to do a little bit of a setup here. All right, he's cool. We're gonna see a. Hopefully, we're gonna see a fast cycle in this part. It's getting set up for it. Nice. Getting that ultra too. Not overextending that ultra. We have seen that in a race setting. Teej is getting ready to head into Summit now. That Scrub Lord getting caught up here trying to dash straight down, but doing it just a little early. He's able to pick himself back up and move along here. He's got a few screens before he gets into the second round, and Teej is getting ready to ascend the mountain. I believe if Teej can get a, a great, a pretty good Summit, um, he is on pace for a sub-29. Like, definitely. Um, real quick, T 
Tejas sum of best in the league is a 28-25. And Scarf Lords is a 29-51. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Tejas stats real quick. And we can talk about his summit times from the previous week. Give me one quick second here. And I'm pretty sure by the time I'm done catching this, Teach might be in 500, and Scrub Lord might be out of battling. So give me one moment here. All right, let's talk Summit times. For Teach, he has... He had an 829, an 823, and an 837 from last week. Um, very solid. So pretty consistent, I would say. Summon has a lot of opportunities to just throw all kinds of wrenches and everything at you. Uh, and I'll grab Scrub Lord's times here real quick too. Hold on. All right, in Scrub Lord's times, we have an 8.59, an 8.43, and a 9.18. Now, that is still a very commendable time, but you have to keep in mind here, like, TGH is... TGH, to me, TGH and Summit go hand in hand. Like, he has... As far as I've been watching and, like, paying attention to his runs and whatnot, he has been a monster at Summit. I think right now, um, a runner that can hold a, a candle to him would definitely be flat in that regard. But, like, his Summit has always been very solid. And just finding all cold strats. Now he's actually in 1000 here as Scrub Lord is getting ready to ascend the mountain himself again. I tip my water bottle over. Don't worry, folks. It's got a cap on it. I mean, if I'm giving you guys a play by play on the game, I should give you a play by play on what's happening uh, at the commentator's desk as well. Yeah, so we are zooming along here. Now we got these cool dream hypers and also we're gonna have a sync come up here momentarily so hold tight folks All right, sync is live. All right, live TV is asking, what controllers are they playing with now? I'm not sure about Scrub Lord. I'm going to go ahead and take a strong guess that he's playing on a DualShock 4. And then Teach is actually using a Scruff controller. So now Teach is zooming through 1500. I didn't even get to talk about it. <laughs> he's about to climb into 1000 now. Scrub Lord here going into his 1000. Again, back to these Dream Blocks. So you can uh, hyper out of these. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. It's my funnest section of Summit, just because the movement looks so crisp. If you want to see like a near perfect run from that, you should go watch TGH's uh, AGDQ All Chapters Run. Not only is it just phenomenal play, but his fantastic commentary from Punchy, Ben Teasy, Dave Stereo as well. Definitely recommend watching. All right, so Scribbler moving along. He's getting for this auto scroller skip. Nicely done. Oh! Almost. Oh! <gasps> oh no! Not getting enough height off of his vertical dash there. Gonna have to do this all over again. And that that skip is a little, little tight. You do have to wall bounce there and get across. TJ will get a second try here. Scoreboard now in 1500. We got these two really long rooms. I'm gonna see if he's gonna go for this ultra strat. Oh, Bonx, a dust bunny, you have to get on the cycle now. But I think it's okay because usually the setup is the same. Um, he's going to get that cycle skip here, even with the death, it's okay. Still going for optimal strats. Let's go. Triple Ultra. One, two, 
and a three. Oh, it makes it look so easy, folks. And then on TG screen, we're gonna see a demo dash like that. Bam, oh my gosh, it's just like, tech is flying all over the screen. I'm trying to catch it all as quick as I can, folks. I hope you guys are enjoying the wild ride here. Oh, Scrubble are taking a death here on this room. Again, cycles are gonna come into play. Strategy's gonna be a little different. Not gonna be able to wall bounce off of that. He gets away scot-free. Tej now in 2500. Oh, okay, we got that uh, other strat. I like it. But taking a bonk on the spikes there. Teach getting ready for Doorscape here. He's got to thread a needle first. And he does it with the highest precision. Alright, one door. Two doors with a demo, too. And now Scrubblord getting in his auto-scroller section. Opting for a different strat by neutral jumping, I guess, off of both of those bricks? I'm not sure what that would be called. I think it's similar to what uh, runners do in City on that second to last screen. But now Teach is getting into Summit, the real Summit, 3,000 folks. Scrub Lord making his way through, about to get to the Battle Land alley -oops section. He's got this screen to handle here. A nice showcase of wall bounces. All right, Teach hitting flag at number 28. And again, he's just gonna start ascending. This section here is the downdraft portion. Um, basically, the wind is working against you as expected and always in this game. Um, but you gotta remember that anytime that you dash, it negates all wind effects. So we're gonna see a lot of dash button presses here. And also again, wall bounces too, just to kind of fight through the wind. This is a very clean down drive here. Just a few sections as he heads into flag 20. Gets it and this is a nice push to the updraft section here. Scrub Lord on the other hand, nailing this lovely strat. I love that one, it's so clean. As he gets ready for his key skip. Basically, we don't even go to that bottom room because we do two spike jumps and it looks a little difficult But I'm gonna let you in on a little tip if you actually set another button to jump um, What you do is hold that button and then just go and try to perform a spike jump and it's easy as pie Not strawberry pie just pie All right teach now making his way through the updraft portion now This is the opposite effect instead of the wind pushing Madeline towards the ground. It's actually gonna give her a nice little boost um Matt and the gang behind the developers behind this decided like okay we're gonna give you a little bit of a lift we're also gonna make it so that you actually have to traverse horizontally a lot and uh, there's not gonna be a lot of safe places to land so have fun with that as you see here in flag 11 scrub lord now getting set up for his ascent in 3000 got flag 9 here this one is a little tricky there's a few places where if your timing is just a little off um, it will result in the death, most notably at the beginning and the end. Tej handling it no problem as he gets into flag six here. Now this is going to cut it really close. He might get a sub 29. He's going to have to play this last section very clean. It's going to be very close. Scrubboard on the other hand, starting his downdraft section here. And again, downdraft for the most part, I feel is optimize you'll see a variance in strats most notably in that flag right there um i think it's really just player preference in that uh flag as well just really what runners are more comfortable with i believe the ones that tj was going for are a slightly faster okay this is gonna be really close we're gonna see if tj can get a sub 29 here oh he's not but it's gonna be really close it's gonna be like a 2904 2903 tj taking the first race A scrub lord now on flag 15. Flag 15 is really short. It's not even really anything there. Oh, taking a death on 14 though. Oof. Flag 14 and 13 um, are troublemakers, to put it nicely. Uh, you got a long section here. 13 in particular. And also you have the coin switches as well. So a death in any of the section can result in a huge time loss. Scrub lord handling it exquisitely as he is moving forward he's moving along here and getting to flag number 10 
Alright, and Teach popping into the epilogue here. 13 deaths in total. Uh, two of those are intended, so 11. And of course, if you keep in track of our, our strawberries here, we got two. I'm actually curious if, uh, if there will be strawberry pie at Pace, which is coming up in April, folks. So um, hotel registration actually went live today. So if you're planning on going, definitely reserve a room and get set up. I am definitely going to be putting forth an effort to make it out because I am trying to watch all of the finals in person. I'm trying to go crazy, bring my fan the whole nine yards. I'm trying to pop off. But scribbler now closing up, getting that nice diagonal dash. Oh my gosh, I love that strat. It's very, I, I don't know if it's very tricky. I just don't know how to set it up myself. Uh, I've had a lot of runs die at that because I'm stubborn and I like to go for that. But he is on flag one now. Oh, getting a little hung up on the wall there. You see some nice movement up here. Just daintily passing by these spikes. A few more hops and he's going to clock in. It looks to be at a 3047. And that is going to take care of our first race, folks. Uh, I believe we might be taking a short break here. And after that, I'll actually be joined by the one and only programmatic to see out race number two and number three. Teach got his times up here. Uh, very looking pretty crisp, if I say so myself. And then now Scarp Lord with 29 deaths. Again, a lot of those deaths came from demo in his demo attempts. I wanted to actually bring this up. Uh, in the first week, um, Scarp Lord had his own strat to go for a demo dash because he wasn't too comfortable with the um, the lining up of the pixel. Like basically what you do is you grab the wall, you're going to move up two pixels and there's a visual cue there. There's like a little black line in the wall. And then from there you do a full jump and right as you're about to come down, you're going to do your demo dash and boom, right? Um, Scarborough was not comfortable with that strat and he devised his own, which looks amazing, but it's also, um, I wouldn't be able to pull it off. <laughs> I don't have the execution for that. He was able to get it on the third try in race one from last week, but I believe in the third race, he got a little caught up and took a lot of attempts at it, which ultimately um, ended up losing time versus going for the quad hyper room. But as we saw in this race, he's actually kind of getting set up to going for that, the, you know, the strat that everybody else has kind of gotten familiar with. It did take him a few attempts. So I'm curious to see, if he's going to continue with that or if he's going to try to do his own strat. Also, Scarblord went for the no auto scroller skip in Riz, uh, Golden Ridge. Um, I would love to see that again. I want to see it. I want to see him actually nail it. So I think we might see that in the next run. We'll see. Hey, and I'm here, Vado. Hello, Programmatic. Hi. How's your night going? Good. Awesome. Are you ready for uh, a hot? second race here mm -hmm. also folks don't forget immediately after this race we are going to have another celeste any percent league race going against uh chai kitty versus Evan's fight. It's going to be very hype. Definitely looking forward to it. All right, it looks like we are going to get ourselves set up here for race number two.
Nej, jag går skrämt ut. Alex är getting a hold until TGH gets in as well. Alright, TGH is up and running too. And then again, folks, with, with Prologue, um, actually, I didn't mention this in the first race. You see that Madeline's kind of just hopping through the forest here. Uh, we do that because every jump saves about two frames and speeds up the process yeah. here. That bridge portion can get a little tricky because you could miss a jump input, and then you have to adjust yourself on the fly, particularly with that gap. Both runners are able to handle that very well as we move into City. See a reverse hyper from TG screen. He's going to nail that. Scrubler's going to get it as well. Now, there were a few mishaps in City, and it's bound to happen. I mean, you know, every screen just kind of optimizes uh, all of the tech that's available in the game. But so far, both runners looking very clean. Teej yeah. getting that ultra there. Now, Scrubler actually does not go for that stride, but he has a backup. Yeah, it's... It's kind of oddly inconsistent, as far as I could tell. Like, I don't know exactly what the conditions are for landing the corner boost, but um, like, it's a pretty safe strat. Like, I I feel like if Scrubblord were to at least try it, he at least wouldn't lose time. But I'm not completely sure if a failed attempt at the corner boost is actually a time loss or not, because it still gets you to the platform really quickly. You just have to climb up onto it before it moves up. Yeah, uh, the backup strat, at least for that I'll, I do, and I've seen other runners do, is basically just get on, and then before the platform, uh, you know, slams into the ceiling, just to jump in a diagonal dash down. I think the worst case scenario that you can get is actually accidentally grabbing that little corner as you're altering down. But other than that, yeah, it's uh, it's not as risky as it seems. Yeah. It's kind of like yeet, just something that you can go for as many times as you want, and... If you don't get it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like in chat programmatic, they want to know... Who would you say is your favorite of the Celestrons? As in, my favorite, what's favorite my favorite runner? race so far? Or who's my favorite runner so far? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> how about we just... We can go with both, because... Uh, well, my favorite race so far would probably have to be, I think it was Melee versus Scrublord, because as far as I remember, that's the only 2-1 we've we had so far, right? That is correct. Yeah, that was definitely the closest mashup we've had at this point. Yeah, I would agree with you too. I would also say Nero versus Sushi was actually pretty exciting too, especially yeah. that last race. Alright, Teej is getting ready to tackle his awake section. Whoa. His awake from race one, one was really clean. Scrubler did like a huge bunny hop instead of uh, doing another hyper bunny hop there. It didn't it didn't look faster, but it looked pretty uh, consistent. Oh, oh he just, he's there's he's one corner in awake. Let's count the corners, shall we? Be able to recuperate like, here. Go oh, that alters a little too soon. Oh, he does a forward corner boost there. That's also interesting. All right, now both runners in resort. Again, this is just going to come down to some super optimal movement. We see Teach actually doing some grounded ultras there now. Yeah. Uh, usually people just kind of go for a nice short hyper but that's going to shave more time off. Yeah, and you can see Scrubbler just doing kind of chain wave dashes because uh, due to the way that uh, dashing into the ground actually works, uh, 
chaining a series of wave dashes together is oh uh, he, he's just gonna reset the cycle okay oh we uh, that again yeah he's coming in a little too fast he's gonna have to come up with a really strange backup okay that worked uh but what i was saying earlier is chaining wave dashes like one after another is actually ever so slightly faster than chaining hypers due to the fact that um a diagonal dash into the ground actually gives you a very small speed boost. And it's the reason that grounded ultras work, is because you're constantly di uh, dashing diagonally into the ground from midair. And so cha uh, chain wave dashes are basically sub-optimal grounded ultras. And in the same way, you could say that a grounded ultra is just perfectly executed chain wave dashes with, with uh, like buffering every single input. So. You might do when you do like wave dashes in a sequence. Uh, the period there, that you're dashing along the ground actually does give you a little bit of ultra momentum. So that's what you saw Scrubler doing there, while TGH just tried to do ultras. Oh, he's gonna wait for a backup cycle. That's probably a smart move. In TGH's maze section, his has been very clean. Scrubless as well. Running to a small hang up there, yeah, um, but able to get out. And hypers out. Teach now moving along on the book section. We also have another question in the Ooh, chat. Oh, he went for the, the extra fast cycle and missed it, and now oh. he's doing. Oh no. oh no! Okay, he's That's... at that time. That was a pretty significant time loss, though. All right. So Story City asked us. Who we believe has the best chance of going all the way in the league? Um, as in personally, like... I think yeah. The who who is I guess like I think they're asking who is our front runner to to take it all. Um, well, I mean, like just judging by the results of past tournaments, it's probably going to come down to uh, like TJH and um, Fuladerby are definitely going to be up there. And then I can expect to see like narrow MC Shi and maybe even Chai Kitty um, also uh, competing at the top. Yeah, um, I definitely, if I were to put my uh, place my bets on two, uh, I would definitely go for Tiege and Fluderby as well. Both very phenomenal runners here, but we have a lot of time before we actually get to the playoffs and the, uh, the finals as well. So yeah. you have Nero, you have Sushi, you have Chai Kitty, who's just kind of exploded. You also have Black yeah. Pear. I believe Black Pear is very close to hitting sub 30 as well. Um, and then just all the league runners have been just really pumping out ex exceptional runs. I mean, Flare Bear got a PB uh, in his last race, hitting, I think it was sub 31, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh... Evans fight and uh, Flare Bear both got their first sub 31 as the league was going. So yeah, and there's still a lot very, of time very, left. Very quickly. Like I think Evans fight like gained like two whole minutes on his PB over the course of less than a month. So. Yeah, and that's nuts. <laughs> and also, if I remember correctly, he has not been running any percent. He's been running ARB um, oh. prior to the league starting. So. Um, the huge thing there is that the air B route is completely different. So muscle memory does come into play. Mm -hmm. So being able to, you know, quote unquote, rewire yourself for any percent again, and also to save two minutes off your PB is phenomenal. I know that Evan's fight generally um, goes for a little more spicy dicey strats. Same with Scrub Lord as well, too. I mean, ultimately, I believe what really is going to come down to is just like whoever is putting in the work and keeping themselves one consistent and two uh improving as well and i mean with like runners like um tgh and flutter v you know like they're the two at the top so those big time oh scrubler yes yeah. smashing into those dust bunnies <laughs> there when you when you when you accidentally hit that spring it often feels like it just happened randomly because it's like it's like something that you can get so consistently if, if you do it the same way every time but sometimes it just doesn't work Yep, and, and then I muscle think, memory takes over. I think it just happens when you like 
press the jump button for just a few frames too long and you don't get the second bunny hop high enough. All right, so Scrubble's going to get out, though. Fantastic last screen there. And, and Teach is making his way through. Uh, and in that... Oh! Um, yeah, oh, okay. Okay, he got there. <laughs> it was in a little that, scary. In that two-switch room, I saw he came out of... Uh, diagonally out of the bubble at the end. So maybe there are a few uh, new strats where you can take it diagonally. In fact, I think that's only possible in a recent patch where they adjusted some of the spikes in that room, right? That is true. They did change the yeah. spikes for that room. Um... I know that was up for debate because they said even though you can dash diagonally forward, you still had to wait for the switch to um, basically get out of Madeline's way. So maybe the idea of doing a demo dash uh, could save a little bit of time there. But mm -hmm. that seems a little risky because there are spikes like right there. And if you mess it up, you are kicking off of that block and facing a death. Yes. Yeah, so like aside from the big 3a demo dash uh, uh runners are still kind of searching for ways to utilize the demo dash hyper in order to just save a few frames in certain situations because doing a demo hyper allows you to save the amount of time you need to jump up in order to wave dash in some situations speak oh hold on hold on oh hold on oh he's going. come on Scorpio. he's going for it he went for he's it race one i want to see it Ooh, Second let's try. go! Mm, that's so crispy! <laughs> Rage oh, oh my record gosh. holder, by the way. <laughs> At least I think he stole it, right? Uh, that, I believe so? Because I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure he's the only runner so far to ever get both auto scroller skips in an IL run. So he currently holds the world record for this chapter. And as a result, he's probably the only person with the guts to actually go for the first auto scroll skip in a run. And now teach in cliff face. Actually, the home stretch cliff face. <laughs> okay, yeah. Definitely not gonna go for the second skip, though. That one's a little bit, like, twice as hard as the first one. As hard as yeah. the first one is. Yeah, going back to uh, our front runners, I believe, you know, it, this sounds very cliche. Just whoever's really just putting in that time. Because, I mean, you know, someone can have an exceptional PB or like an exceptional PB time, but like if they're not hitting that consistently, at least in a good ballpark range, I would say like, let's say 15 to 30 seconds of their PB. Um, if they can't do that, then they're gonna run into a little bit of a problem here. Now, actually, I know a few runners have been trying to do these like um, these no reset challenges. I know TJH is doing one, and Evans mm -hmm. Fight is doing one as well. I'm not sure if the other runners are partaking in that, but I want to see if that's going to pay off in oh. their favor. Uh, oh, we got a yeet. We <laughs> get a yeet in chat. All right, he's gonna. And Teach had a phenomenal tape grab. Um, I believe it was a 112, and that was with a. I think just That's pretty a crazy, yeah. Few, few bonks here, but look at this. This is even. Faster. Is he gonna get a sub 110? Uh. Yes. He, wow. I, I, I can't oh quite tell God. it actually. I feel no, like... he got a 109. I, I saw it on my screen. It was a very close one, but... I, I feel like I saw it turn into a 10 as the screen was wiping, but I'm not certain. That is nuts. And again, just finding those small optimizations, because I believe before it was like, you know, around one... Like I said, 112 to 115 is uh, has been the pace for it. All right, Scribble again set up for Yeet 2. Oh! Mm -hmm. And it Yeet. looks good! Okay, Let's now Teach coming up on bump strap. Oh, <gasps> and he goes—he oh. goes too early. Too early that time. Have to return to the map, yeah. It's gonna give Scrubbleard some time to catch up, but the lead is still pretty significant. We'll see though. Uh, the second one here could uh, give Scrubbleard the break. Nope, Teach is not yeah. gonna allow <laughs> it. And now Scrubbleard. Oh my gosh, is he gonna get us? No, he's gonna be like right on one ten, maybe one eleven. Okay, I lied. Uh, 112. 112. Oh! Took a did you little see while. 
yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> he so, might not have no. He might not have gotten used to the um, menu wrap. I don't yeah. Think he because that was one of the new things in the patch too. Um, they allow you to, you know, by default, they made all the runners go all the way down to return to map, but then they added a menu wrap. Uh, I oh, think... Peach might get yeah. an awkward cycle here. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I don't, I don't think know. he can save no, this. He's gonna... He can save this. No, no. he was going for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, got... That was immediately what I was, I was like, nope, this is what you gotta do. I wanted to see it, but it's okay. He left the bubble a little too early. And so he's got, he was gonna get a bad cycle there. And so he kind of just got spooked by the spike and tried to back off, but you can't do that if you can't get your dash back. Yeah. It, it looked like he was still okay to go. Maybe he could just, he could have had, like demo dashed under the spike or something. But yeah, <laughs> there's definitely no way you can wait there. So it's a very cycle heavy room. All right, now Scrub was going to tackle that room as well. He's getting into Seeker Palooza. Just I just came up with that. This oh my gosh, this room. <laughs> You don't want me to talk about this room here because I will probably uh, get angry. I don't like it. The Teach <laughs> handles it very easily um, as he heads into the Theo section here. And we're going to see nice diagonal dash. Oh, spoke too soon. Yeah, those that diagonal second... dashes are really difficult to get. Yeah, that second one is tough. Oh, oh. overextending on that too. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I think Scrubboard's uh, just feeling a little bit of pressure here, trying to... Yeah, he's trying to opt oh. for more of these, like, time saves, but not really going in his favor. Playing it safe this time. I think that's a real important, like, having that presence of mind where, like... I, I talked about it in the first race where, like, you know, you, you goof up a strat and you're like, no, I got to prove to myself that I can do this. Um, most of the time... It will work, but a lot of times, sometimes you just gotta like, you know, throw the hand away and just get through the room, you know, at a slower pace. Kind of mm -hmm. reminds me of um, like in fighting games or like anything else. Like if you do try to do like a special move and you mess up on it, you immediately want to try to do the move afterwards. Which in a fighting game situation, if you can get, become that predictable, it's bad. So I think the th same things kind of fall in here where they're just like, no, I can do this, and it's like, well, we know you can. Whoa! Uh, what? <laughs> that, I don't think that was intentional. <laughs> I am, I am living for that strat. <laughs> it did not look intentional at all, but it worked out in his favor somehow. Those, those, those seeker bombs can really screw you over in the Theo section too, because I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh, he's gonna have to neutral. Oh, oh no! Oh I was gonna say he threw Theo and my train of thought at that seeker. I am super lost right now. <laughs> oh my god! But I'm pretty sure if you get hit by a seeker shockwave while you're not holding Theo, you actually lose the ability to grab Theo for a moment. At least that wow. that felt like the case uh, in that situation, because it looked like he was trying to grab Theo uh, after it knocked him back, but he couldn't. Okay. <laughs> I had to get, regain my composure there. All right, now, so now, Teach and Hollows and Scrub Lord getting his reflection underway here. And again, we're going for this top route. Now, funny story, I was actually, you know, because we talked about demo um, dash and then also demo hypers too. I was trying to see if I can find a way to make the bottom route a little faster. Um,. By demo hypering into the room, and then you know how in the top room we'll see it. Hopefully, we'll see it on TJ's screen where he's gonna bounce off this fourth bumper and then dash right back into it like that. Yeah, I actually tried to do that on the second or the the lower bumper that's uh in that bottom room, and it's possible to actually you know skip that whole section and then catch that last one into the feather, but it's not faster. It's it's still like <laughs> a second slower. Oh. I'm not sure what T just... I think T just trying to get a bumper bounce there. That is the strat that he's been going for, but just yeah. early input. Oh, he misses the... Missing that, that too. Oh, and okay. Scrubboard just throwing metal into the spikes there. 
did an ultra when he already had hyper momentum and it sent him into the spikes, yeah. Yeah, that room, it's tempting. I really want to, I hope someone finds a way so you can just ultra down into that feather. But I think yeah. even if you do, the momentum that Madeline has actually will push you into the hazard zone on the ground and will force yeah. it. Alright, Tej heading into Ravine. I believe, I think Scrub Lord goes to top route too. I'm not 100% sure. Alright, now we're going to get a battle and boost on Tej's end. Thread that needle and mm. get it in there. You see those Heyas in the chat? Everybody's. Oh! Not getting enough height on the, uh, to clear those spikes. I was going to say, probably a lot of people's favorite emote. And, you know, again, everybody's favorite section, I think, in the game. Scoreboard getting ready to encounter Ravine here. Just got to get through this one screen. It's going to get the fast cycle on the feather. And he is out. Getting ready for, again, those developer intended shortcuts. Which can make or break a run. Um because there is no checkpoint. Now I know Nero actually goes for the checkpoint and has a route around that. I think what he does is he, similar to that top route, he, he hits a bumper and then uh, dashes through it. To oh, oh, he, he, oh, no. no. It looked like he, he wanted the checkpoint, but then he forgot the whole grab and just went for it. Yeah, and that setup is a little bit more difficult. He's gonna get it there. Having a little hang up there as he enters this underwater section. Uh, fun fact, Matt actually wanted Reflection to be an underwater level. Um, so thank you for only having a little bit of it and not all of it. Because <laughs> I don't know how I would want to deal with a battle and fight underwater. That does not sound fun. Um, Celeste Mod Makers, I hope I didn't give you an idea for a map. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's already been a custom map where it's the entirety of Reflection underwater. Oh god. I think I've seen something about that before. I uh, do not want. Oh, Teach is having a little bit of hang up here in this uh, vertical battling room. Yeah, and uh, the Kevins actually have a uh, second sound effect for when they're underwater, but you almost never get to hear it because they're almost never underwater. Oh, There's really? only like two rooms I can think of where it's actually possible to make a Kevin go underwater, so. Oh, yeah. It's a rare occurrence. See, they were thinking about it. Oh, corner bop, but able to just. Oh my gosh, corner bops are uh, not fun in the game. <laughs> Basically, corner what bops. it is is that, uh, yeah, I can't really call it what we normally call it in the community. Oh, just because, okay, <laughs> yes. I so just call I, it I, getting I, cornered. So, getting cornered. Uh, okay, yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been uh, running with corner bop as a as a term because it's very easy to, especially in the heat of the moment, to say the official name but we're not going to go into that <laughs> yeah we'll uh, stay away from that but uh basically you try to dash off if I'm, you can correct me if i'm wrong here but to me it's like you're trying to dash off of a corner and then you jump but instead of having your momentum the corner's like i'm gonna take all of that away from you and i'm gonna watch you just stall yeah. out the reason they happen is because you uh don't actually land on the platform but instead you slightly miss it causing you to do a wall jump off the corner of the platform instead of actually mm. doing a bunny hop like you were trying to do so and thankfully in that situation uh it wasn't too detrimental and Tej was able to uh get himself on a backup strap but there are some instances where it happens and you're just like well i guess i'll just die <laughs> yeah I know Tej getting into summit here again um this one it's gonna take a lot of, actually yeah. i don't know if sub 29 is possible here he's gonna have to pretty much just pull the brakes off the car and just put the pedal to the metal the entire way so 29 for tgh yeah. yeah he's gonna have to get like a yeah a mid definitely. seven which is as far as that's, i know not I, attainable. i don't think that's possible yeah that's not yeah world record isn't no, not yeah, I think it doesn't have to be sub seven, but it does have to be like just barely over eight. Like, yeah, it, I think... it will have to be an IO world record, I'm pretty sure. So, 
Yeah, and I think currently, I think Flat has it with, uh, an, I think he has 807, is what I want to say. That's like, crazy. Can be wrong about that? It's, it was a pretty wild uh, summit. Alright, and Scroll Lord finishing up his reflection and getting ready for his summit too. We're gonna see if Teach is gonna go for this. Uh... Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's probably going for it. Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he was going for it. Battle and must have came out of nowhere and just put a little uh, cooking oil on that zipper. <laughs> Secretly not on Madeline's side, even at this point in the game. All right, we'll be getting a sync momentarily here, so don't don't freak out, folks. It's gonna be all right. All right, I seen in chat that someone's asking how many different games are being raced on this channel. There are a lot, but from the league standpoint, we have four. No. Five altogether, four different games. So we have Celeste, we have Mario Kart Double Dash, which by the way, that was on right before this, and I caught the tail end of that. Oh my gosh, if you're not tuning into that, you need to tune into that because those races are super close and it's mad hype. Um, but we also have Odyssey. Ooh, oh. I don't know if he was trying to do a dive. He is, uh, that's a really tight corner boost. Oh, that's. Trying to get the wall boost to dash a little too soon, it seems. Oh. Oh, he's trying to reverse hyper. Yeah, I think he's trying to reverse yeah. hyper off of that, too. That one is just. Are we gonna... it's okay. Oh, oh, he almost gets it. He, 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 he got through the gap, but then didn't dash up in time. Yeah, he's not going to go for it. Again, that. yeah, that's very smart. I mean, some runners will get caught up in like, like I said, they're like, no, I need to get that trick. But yeah, um, with the leagues, so we have Celeste, Mario Kart Double Dash, Super Mario Odyssey, and then Super Mario 64 are the four games that are being run. With Super Mario 64, we actually have two different leagues. Um, the 16 star and the 70 star. And I think there are actually multiple divisions in one of those. I'm not 100% sure. But um, if you enjoy watching competitive speed running like any of those will wet your palate i'm telling you that right now it is like super hype i've been like slowly trickling into some of the other games like odyssey has been super hype i really like watching 16 star so yeah like the, the four games like especially like celeste 64 and odyssey are like probably oh no oh no probably like some of the best speed games out there at the moment i would say yeah i agree and um after watching like the mario kart double dash stuff i feel like that's gonna start making its way up the ranks like it's just bizarre how close to like walls and everything else like these guys are just millimeters away from like slamming into walls and stuff like that it's really a, a sight to see whoa whoa tgh he's all right but that was interesting <laughs> He had to save himself with a snowball twice there. The snowball just happened to be there when he needed it. In both cases. Alright, now scoreboard in the ultra room. Okay, oh! He caught, yeah, he caught the floor there and, and lost a little momentum, but was able to get out scot free. Oh, he's fine. Uh, he he's might, fine. yeah, neutrally and just in case he's out of stamina. It didn't look like he was, but just in case. You have to count how many jumps you do, and in situations like that, you can't quite remember always. Alright, now Teach getting to 2,500. Got about a 500 meter difference between the two runners right now. Maybe see some demos here? No? Actually, I've been... I watched your movement tutorial, programmatic, to see the uh, those those demo dashes going into effect, and I must say it it definitely gave me a better understanding for that. And I'm actually trying to go for that 2,000 room uh, by doing the did demo I, dashes there. Did I put the demo dashes in there? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think you you I don't know if you put that actually in there, but you did break down about like you know 
uh, oh, demo hypers. I'm sorry. That's I think that's the better term for it. So, oh yeah. So I remember Just people were talking about it, and I was like, "How do you do it? It's kind of like I don't understand." But uh, I was able to kind of see it and then get a better breakdown on that. So uh, thank mm -hmm. you very much oh, for so doing what, that. Uh, was considering retrying, but then he was like, "Wait, no, I can say this," and then he does. So that's good. <laughs> And then speaking of demos, we saw Teach demo dash through the door skip, which also actually uh, I've incorporated as well. I thought it was going to be kind yeah, of makes difficult. it a lot easier. Yeah, it really like, does. If you have a demo dash of a sign, you can just do that whenever you need to dash under something. Just like feel free to do it and make it safer. There's no reason Ooh. not to, to be honest. Scoreboard yeah, not getting his little... dash input was yeah, that was a little. <laughs> I was about to scream, but not really. But that would have been. Uh, definitely a gasp if he would have fell there. <laughs> All right, now Tijon 3000 again through this down draft section. Now, this down draft section in race one from Tij was very clean, looking real crisp. And it looks to be the same here. I just love how 3000, like, if you were to watch, like, a previous, you know, world record run versus to how it is now, it's so crazy how the optimization has just come into play. Especially that right there. I love that. <laughs> I won't go it's... for it because I don't know how to set that up, but it looks good. Uh, you need to be. Uh... So I think the reason why that works, and I don't know if I'm going to end up going to like a paragraph of explanation again, but uh, because I'm pretty sure like the wind. So like we already know how the whole like going through spikes mechanics work if you're going in the direction the spikes pointing it doesn't kill you but in cases like those you actually are moving in the direction that the spikes are point oh no scrub lord one sec oh the camera boundary oh, no. yeah i think there was a patch that uh made that camera boundary go even higher so i don't know if you could have survived that in a previous patch i think it was only in a uh, updraft that that change was implemented though so probably isn't different but the reason you could jump on those upward pointing spikes uh, is because like wind uh, from both ridge and from summit, um, it doesn't actually like change your velocity in terms of how it affects uh, spikes. Like uh, Madeline's velocity still like has the same direction, but the wind just applies just a constant uh, change in position in whichever direction it's pointing. Meaning that you can be you can be moving right because of the wind, or up because of the wind, or any direction because of the wind, but still actually be moving the other way, which means you can still go through spikes even if you're moving against them. And that's kind of why that bunny hop works. It's the same reason why the Tash Strat uh, in the last room of Ridge works, where it doesn't oh, okay. all jump off of spikes. Because Madeline's like velocity is to the left, but because of the wind, she's still moving to the right. But of course, you still you still have to buffer the wall jump because if you actually hit the wall, then you lose all your movement, and then yeah, the spikes kill you. All right, Tease is going to clock in at a twenty nine thirty, and actually, yeah, actually, a runner did that task strat. I don't remember. I think it. Not I can't remember who it was. I remember I was commentating it, so it might have been him, Sushi. Scrubble is going, I think Scrubble is going for the double wall skip right now. I think so too. <laughs> this this trick to... is... Okay, he, he's not going to Oh, do he's this got one. it. No, he he got the, he did the first wall. Oh, he did the first wall, he, okay. Yeah. It looked like he oh, was you trying can... to do it though. Oh, hold on. So you can actually just dash past both of those and then just go straight to the third one? Yeah, if you just barely uh, graze the first corner of spikes, you can actually get enough distance not to have to do any wall jumps there. But you have Ooh. like a two pixel window uh, to get past those spikes and still have enough room to do it. So it, it's a little difficult to tell if you can do it. All right, now Scrub Lord getting into the home stretch, jumping into flag number six. In the last bit of our updraft portion of Summit. Heading into flag three, he's gonna pick up the checkpoint 
Um, in a previous race, we saw the mishap. Somebody actually skipped three and two, and unfortunately died on their way to one and started oh. all the way back at four. And they were actually kind of stunned that that happened because they didn't even move. And uh, I was for certain that they had grabbed at least flag number three. So yeah, fla that flag, can happen. flag three is a flag that. that you could only miss by accident. Like, there's no strat that skips like three as far as I'm yeah. aware. All right, now Scribblord finishing up as well. Though, uh, when it comes to skipping multiple flags in a row, uh, Chai Kitty, I'm pretty sure, skips flag uh, 10 and 9 and 8. Uh, oh, wow. At, uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Like everybody yeah. skips flag flag eight, but and a lot of people skip flag ten, but I don't think anyone else skips flag nine. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah, especially with like how that 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 area is designed too. I would rather have that checkpoint over the other two. Yeah, because there's just a lot of a lot of needle threading going on there. Like you're stitching up a PB or something like that. All right, but Scrub Lord is going to clock in at a 31-24. Tej is going to take this set and be awarded a bonus point. But we have one more race to go. It sounds like the runners are going to be taking a short break here before we head into the final race. So I will throw the schedule up on my screen and give you guys a rundown. Again, off the bat, we are going to have another Celeste race after this. It is Chai Kitty versus Evan's fight. And I believe... We're actually going to start off Sunday with more Celeste action. I believe it's Black Pair versus Sight, if I'm not mistaken. I have to pull up the schedule here. Give me one second. Uh, on Sunday, you said? Yeah. Um, we have... We have TGH versus Sight. Oh, no, that was last week. My bad. Uh, yeah, Black Pair versus Sight. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be a really good one, too. If I remember correctly, both their PBs are really similar. In fact, I can I can pull the information up right now if you give me just one second. But I believe uh, on comms for that is going to be Flare Bear and Amasushi, both runners in the league and also both fantastic commentators. I would highly recommend getting up early and getting that. I am probably going to try to catch that as actually, well. Actually, uh, PB today. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, he brought he brought his PP down about ten seconds. He's at twenty nine, uh, twenty eight now. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, he he took a he passed um he passed Chai Kitty. Yeah, well actually he passed. He was just barely ahead oh, of yeah, Chai Kitty barely. before barely. he got this PP. Just a few milliseconds actually, but yeah, he he uh he passed Phoenix. Who disappeared off the leaderboard for a bit and caused some confusion. It's crazy because the top 10 is about to all is very close to being all sub 30, which is nuts. I mean, it's practically there. Scrub Lord is at a 30 point <laughs> 30 flat with like a 7.08. And then uh, Black Pair is at a 31 point or 30.01.5. Yeah, that's pretty bonkers. Scrub Lord's, Scrub Lord's 30 00 is two months old, which is pre bird skip. And I think not certain but i think that's even pre bubs drop right is is bub drop more than two months old at this point no i don't no? think so okay. i think it was, i think bubs drop was like oh no i could be wrong demo dash was in october but i yeah, know demo dash is uh pretty old now yeah it, it might be i'm not 100 percent sure but yeah definitely before bird bird skip so we um he is due for a sub 29 but again like but like for example between psych and black pair i mean it's about a 30 sec oh you know a little under 30 yeah. second difference in a celeste race setting that means nothing like yeah. <laughs> to me that means nothing anything is possible yeah and looking at scrub boys pp uh he did do bubs drop there so okay bubs drop is a lot older than i thought it was <laughs> I guess not many people had picked it up at that point. 
And then also, too, with Black Bear and Psych, you mentioned that Psych PB today with that 2928. Black Bear PB'd with a 3001 just two days ago. And I know that he has been grinding it out and been trying to get these sub 30s. Um, I think that he has the potential to actually pull it off in in a race. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see. Yeah, Black Bear's you know, been making quick progress, and Scrubloid hasn't PB'd in a while. So both of them are definitely contenders for the next sub 30 mm -hmm. it's gonna be exciting maybe we'll see it in this race right here hmm. it's three and well it four. is race three and that is where the runners start to get a little tired but we've been wrong about that before we but... have especially like last race with uh sushi and nero those guys were mm -hmm. on super pace and then also um teach has been doing this kind of like no reset challenge thing so I feel like that is going to pay off in the long run, at least from an endurance standpoint. So we'll see as we yeah, head sure. into race number three here. And also, I believe we actually have, we have another race that has not been scheduled yet. And that's uh, between Moose and Fladerby. Uh, those two have not raced yet for week number two. So that might also be on the card tomorrow as well. All right, so we are off and running in Prologue yet again, folks. So actually... I'm going to bring this up because I am pretty sure a lot of people that are trying to do this bird skip have retried because they've gone too early. I believe that the um, event line for that cutscene is where that first brick is on the other side of the bridge. So as long as you can clear that, you can go ahead and skip the cutscene. I'm going to put my oh, FC so racer stamp is, of approval. It is based on time and not by your position, is what you're saying? No, I think it is based on position, because um, but not just position. Yeah, it's like okay. so you know how you have the right side um, that little you know or yeah, there's like a, a gap that you can't reach right, and then as you're jumping, it kind of falls off, and you're like, oh no, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. That first brick, like I think that is where you can cut off. So as soon as Madeline is lined up with that, you can just open and um, yeah. and exit out. And uh, during the brief, very brief period of time when Bird Skip was frame perfect, uh, I had uh, been using sort of a tree in the background as a little guide to when to start pausing. But oh, okay. go a little later than that now that it's frame, uh, no longer frame perfect. Yeah, I definitely. Um, actually, last night I died. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to reset this run. Let's go. And then I died there and I was like, I'm going to reset this run. <laughs> and it always seems to happen when people are like, this is a no reset run. We're going to do this. It like I feel like 75% of the time they die in prologue now. All right, so we are out of city. It looked like Scribble had a little bit of hang up towards the end of that. So Teach off to uh, having a strong lead here. And the timers are kind of synced a little bit, but... Synced enough, like two seconds yeah. apart. I think it's safe to say that T just got a, a nice lead here. Yeah, so at least like ten seconds, maybe a little more. As we head into battle line yet again. Also, for those that are curious too, um. A lot of people yesterday celebrated the one year anniversary. Hold on, T's gotta go pick that coin up. Madeline, you dropped your baggage. We need you to come pick it up. <laughs> but yeah, it's been a year since this game came out. And as I said before, it feels like it's been out way longer. And I think that's just partly due to the fact that, you know, I've put in a lot of hours as a lot of runners have too. Like mm -hmm. I've seen some of them post their like Steam total hours played and I'm just like, I have not put that much time into this game. <laughs> I was yeah. like, holy cow. 
it felt like it, but I like I added up. I think I'm at, I would say five to six hundred hours total over the uh, three consoles that I have the game on. Yes, I bought the game three <laughs> times. Do not judge me. It is worth it. Let me tell you. But also, um, I didn't start to consider speedrunning the game until later on. And um, let's just say after a few game crashes on PS4 from failing the battle and boost. <laughs> Yeah, I was on like I was on good pace and the game just crashed and I was like, well, I think I'm going to get the PC version now and I yeah. haven't looked back. <laughs> For those of you considering running the game right now, I definitely recommend the PC version at least until the uh parallel update comes out cuz that's when uh, all the consoles will be on the same patch. But at the moment, there are quite a few strats that can only be done on PC. Plus, PC that gives you more options with uh, key bindings and the option to play keyboard in general. Also, oh, and we have a host from Flood Derby. Host from Flood Derby. Thank you, shout Flood out. Derby. Thank you so Hope much. Your runs have been going well. Right, so now, again, there's a few screens behind here. Thankfully, so Scrubbot not having any hangups. had a lot of trouble with that room in the last race. Uh, Getting through yeah. it just fine this time. Actually, I need to figure out the optimal strat in there because I realized with the strat that I have, I think I'm losing like three seconds just in that one room. And I'm not even doing it. There's no deaths or anything. I'm just like waiting for the death monies to move. So, um, Yeah, I have actually... an old strat for that uh, that works on death. So that I, I, I've kind of given up that strat at this point because I go for the faster one but I still have the old strat as a backup mm. yeah that's a, actually a good thing too I know um, I ran into this where I kind of like have stalled out and wasn't sure how to approach to like improve times one of the big tips that I can provide and actually I got this from Ben TZ, is to just kind of you really got to focus on how to optimize as many rooms as you can and there's over 600 in any percent so if you think about it, if you can just optimize like 20 rooms, you can actually save a lot of time and it really yeah. adds up. When I when I practice the game, I kind of get into a little cycle because like I to be honest, I very rarely do any percent runs like. Oh, really? Um, I maybe do like three full runs in a week. But I get pretty much all my practice from just doing ILs because that's where you have the opportunity to just lab and test stuff out. Like doing any percent runs is great for practice, but since you don't really have the options to change things up on the fly, uh, I, I feel like if you really want to look for optimizations, you should do them in IL runs. Because then like if something doesn't work, you can just retry and look for other options. Yeah, and definitely uh, prepare like a backup strat in case things do go south. Which is one of the big things too, because if you don't really have that backup strat and things don't go your way, it's going to result in a death when you could maybe, you know, hold your ground for a second or, you know, do a reverse hyper or something of the sort. I usually am just trying to go in and practice particular rooms and just kind of pinpointing them. Like a perfect example um, is that last screen in City where we kind of, the runners, uh, are just jumping up the wall and then doing a neutral jump on that last bit to hop over. Um, I was doing the old route where you leap out and then do a, a vertical dash and wall bounce up. And um, I started incorporating the other one and actually it's saving like three seconds just from just Wait, from going for the other strat. The the diagonal dash into neutral jump instead of up dash, you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Three seconds, are you sure about that? That's what it said on my PB. <laughs> and I was following like the same. Yeah, I was following the same. Well, yeah, I did. I, I, it's off of my PB because I was. Uh, that's when I, I golded it. And I golded it again by three seconds. And I was like, wow, really? Just from doing that? I mean, I, I might have optimized something or maybe yeah, there had been a death or two. It's probably a lot more than just that. It's probably somewhere between half a second and a second of save, which is still pretty significant for City. But yeah. I, I don't think that can save a whole three seconds that. It's, it was probably more down to overall movement. Yeah. Case. Actually, yeah, I'm thinking about it because I've my reverse hyper uh, is a little 50 50. <laughs> and then the um, ultra slash corner boost is also, I'd say, 80 20. 
depending. So I might have, you know, the, the stars might have lined up, but it definitely, it was definitely a good time save for me. And then just, um, just other small areas too. I think most notably my huge opportunity is Golden Ridge, but you hear how much I talk about how much I hate that chapter. <laughs> so I'm trying to be very stubborn about that. I think my, my game plan personally is uh, to just get 5B down by at least 45 seconds. <laughs> And then I'll go after Ridge. Yeah. Because like, if I do that, then um I'll be on pace for a sub thirty two. Yeah. Which is yeah, like, like my I, next I, goal. I really like Ridge, but I still have like nightmares about the period of time with where I was grinding it for a sub three. Yeah, it's it just took like a oh. very long time to get that. And I know I'm at that point because I've gone through it deathless and it was a three ten and I'm just like the top runners are getting like two forty. So I still yeah. have like 30 seconds to save in this one chapter and I'm doing it deathless. So I'm just like, ugh. So yeah, I just gotta I just gotta change my strats. But that's definitely a good approach. And um But also too, when you are going through like that change or you're changing your route or rewiring or whatever you're trying to do, it's very important to not like get on yourself for like having bad times. I think that's something that is very easy to kind of fall into. You have to remind yourself like hey i'm learning new stuff so you know yeah. mistakes are going to happen and you can't be mad when like you know oh my 5b is six minutes like oh i'm so horrible no you're still learning it you know you got to get you got to give yourself some credit mm -hmm. a little bit of leeway here yeah but um i apologize i kind of pulled off into a tangent here as these guys have been flying through yeah. the <laughs> they, i mean they've both been doing so well that we haven't had a mistake to talk about yeah and also it's like what you know with race number three um you know we don't really want to i don't want to sound like a broken record and just be like oh we're talking about the same thing over and over again you know what i mean so yeah. maybe using that opportunity to just kind of get in some you know speed run strats because i feel like that there's a lot of people in chat and let alone people watching the vods and everything else like um oh he's got wait he's going for this again one sec he gets Ooh, the first let's go. <laughs> yes i'm gonna say it again that was crispy oh so good, man. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm not planning on going for that anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think anyone but Scrub Lord is crazy enough to do that. Yeah. Maybe if Revo comes back. <laughs> by, the way, by the way, Revo, we miss you if you're watching. Keep doing what you're doing. Can we get some A's in chat for Revo? Yeah, let's get some, let's get some A's in chat for Revo, please. Uh, for those that are curious, Revo is the one, the one that was like 5B is faster. And everybody's like, mm, I don't know, man, that's kind of risky. And he's like, watch. And then he just busted it out with the spike jump, which was the original strat. And again, I think they were like, at that time, there was only four runners, um, four or five that were actually going for that strat. Everybody else was still going for 5A. And then Bubs Drop came along and it was just like, all right, we can we can make the, the transition now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, um, no, I mean, there's a lot of people in chat that probably are familiar with some of the other games that are being ran, or maybe, you know, they're just trying to check this out for the first time and um, are getting inspired to try to run the game. So I know um, the community helped me out a lot. I mean, Programmatic, you're still helping me out even after running the game for so long with your tutorials and stuff. There's a lot of resources, but then there's just a lot of, you know, like the mental aspect of not just running this game, but any game in general, I feel is very important to talk about because it's easy to get flustered and um, quit or like, you know, just like, I can't do this. And it's like, mm, yeah, you can, you can, you can pull through. You just gotta get over that mental block. So I think it's cool that we, we're bringing that up. If you guys are enjoying the, that banter, please let us know. Cause you know, if you do, we can keep going with it. If you don't talk about something else, I mean, I know uh, Troy and company were talking about geography <laughs> in one of the races. Was that with, with you, uh, Programmatic, or was that somebody else? Um, I I remember... Oh, wait a second. Yeet? Oh, we got uh, Yeet yet. Let's go. Um, I think I was there at one point when somebody was talking about geography. It was either that or calculus, but yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, and then I think uh, uh, Simply and PD, they'll talk about, like, fast food, I think. I've seen, I've definitely seen that, so you know. Keeping things live is, uh, especially when we're getting nice, clean runs from both runners, uh, most notably in race number three. So, yeah, and 
like for for those of you like newer runners out there like this this is at least what's worked for me but like if if you do get in sort of a mental block with running 90 percent and things like that like what, what i usually do is and like what i almost oh no wait okay he's, say, he's ooh, gonna yeah. say that but um if you can find someone who is has about the same time as you and is just uh kind of learning the game as well definitely try and find ways to like play the game with them do races with them because like learning straps from other people is probably the best way to learn the game i'd say and Actually, being able to talk about strats definitely helps it's actually funny you're bringing that up. I, over my late night banter, as I've always been on for these past hey, couple weeks. What are you doing? Uh, I don't know why he stopped. Yeah, well, yeah. Why did he? Maybe he just got caught up and was like, "I got the tape and was trying to take a drink of water or something," and was like, "Oh, I actually didn't grab it." <laughs> Not sure. Um, a little strange there, but he he's fine. He's through it. But no, it's funny you bring that up because actually I found out that there are a. Uh, three people three three guys that are running dead cells um that are actually getting into celeste and what they do is they get together and they've been doing races with each other and um their times have been moving along very nicely actually it's one of the great things too um, i've noticed a, a lot of people that run other games are starting to dive into celeste and we got a bubs drop on scrubwood screen there let's go like um like i said those three guys that run dead cells um, is it Rock's Tomb, Rock's Tomb, Rhino G, and Hinpaku, I think their names. Uh, you also have Brian Otto, Titanfall 2 runner, that is also jumping into Celeste yeah, as well. Yeah, I've been watching him lately as well. He's progressed quite quickly. Yeah, he has. I feel like he's going to catch up to me, like, probably before March. So, <laughs> at the pace that he's going. So, it's really exciting that, uh, that more people from other speedrunning communities are are reaching out and giving Celeste a go. It's very exciting. Yeah, and it, it, the main reason for that is just that Celeste has pretty much everything you'd want in a good speed game. And anybody mm -hmm. who has a background of speedrunning can definitely get into it. Like, even if you aren't a platforming game speedrunner, it's still a great game to pick up. Teach having a very excellent Seeker Gauntlet room there. Uh, Scoreboard, yeah. getting oh, no, he's, in this room he's again. Trouble in this room again, yeah. I feel like he should just go for a safer strat given how much trouble he had last time, but... I mean, then again, he did go for, um... He did go for <laughs> He's going for that, so... One. Yeah. Now, this room in particular, I saw Nero do a wall bounce off of that. Instead, you know, everybody kind of dashes into that wall and jumps off of it. I've seen Nero do a wall bounce, and I feel that that is a more consistent... Uh, way to get the seeker to jump off the coin. Oh no! Speaking of seekers, in which room? The four coin room? The four search room? Yeah, the four coin room. Oh yeah, I think MCC Just... does that as well. I saw that. And I'm like, I'm gonna borrow that, and I might <laughs> not give it back. It's just but... that it's a wall boost out of hyper momentum, which can be hard to line up sometimes. Mhm. Mm I know. Scoreboard. I actually like that strike. Just I don't need a spring to get over this. I'm gonna use this seeker. I really like that <laughs> movement. He's getting oh. into. Uh oh! Oh no! Yeah, oh, no. that 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 seeker can be a real problem when it comes to knocking Theo out of your hand. Like that's probably the worst thing about seekers when you have Theo is just so, like they'll just bump into Theo and he won't be in your hands anymore, and you'll, it'll take like three seconds or more to pick him back up. Mhm. Mm and then you run into the situation where like, well, should I just retry because it's like not savable Wait, or I'm losing like, too much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing other um, speedrunners dive into the game. I've seen a few Odyssey folks playing Celeste. I'm not sure if they're actually, like, I don't think they're speedrunning it, but they were definitely getting a lot of the speedrun tech. So it would be kind of great to see everybody kind of just, like, merge and then, you know, take what they will learn from Celeste and bring it back to their own communities. All right, so now... Tej is just kind of like busting his way through reflection right now. Yeah, <laughs> like he's, he's like long, really a quarter of a chapter ahead of Scrubbleard right now. Yeah, I'm not even 100 percent sure like uh just how well on pace he is right now. Again, like 
We haven't been mentioning any hiccups or just random spaghetti nonsense and tragedy and drama going on. So I think overall, yeah. this one's been pretty clean. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in chat. I, wonder, I will take uh, full blame. Do these races? Oh, he gets that chat. Do these races count as part of his uh, no reset challenge? <laughs> that is a great. Well, OK. It's a great question. I would want to say yes, but then again, you know, he has a lot of extra stats that yeah. he's keeping track of. So, <laughs> and since, you know, he's not, I believe that, you know, they give him a, a, a stream key so that he's like streaming on something else. Um, there's nobody actually there to mm -hmm. to kind of help keep uh, track because... He's probably secretly saying count it in his head whenever he makes a small uh, movement there. I wouldn't be surprised if he said <laughs> it out loud in a couple situations too. <laughs> see, he's coming along. I'm battling boost, doing a little bit of swag here. I do not have the confidence to do that. <laughs> I feel like Madeline will just be like, well, I'm going to just fall to my death. Bye. But he's in battling. Let's go. Scrub Lord moving his way through as well. About to get into top room yet again. And again, like I said, with battling, it's just like, what else is there to say? <laughs> I'm gonna, I feel like I have to bring that up every single time because I'm gonna just, I really don't know what else to put through there. It's just like, well, you know, just kind of just going at it. I mean, all we can really do is talk about mistakes and deaths, which is not a good thing in my opinion, but I mean, it's so optimized. I mean, I'll always talk about this though. Oh, this strategy. Yeah. So good. It's like, and, you know, especially like with the uh, the pace trailer, and I think also the Celeste oh, Scrub Lord trailer. went over that feather and then dashed back to the left to grab it. Oh, wow. That, he, he had to adjust his cycle on the fly there. That was weird. But yeah, in both those trailers, it showcases that particular, like, tech, and it's just so cool. Oh, he's Ooh, teach a little too far to the uh, Scrabbler is gonna grab the checkpoint now. And next, yep, playing it safe pays off in his favor. It doesn't look like he usually does it though, because he didn't like do any stress or anything. He just kind of walked to it. Yeah, I noticed that he didn't fast fall too much until he got like to the that last little bit of movement. Yeah. He's going from battle on the boost. He's going to get it. We haven't seen the unfortunate mishap where they skip the cutscene too late and Madeline actually gets like embedded into the ground. Because yeah, that I is mean, one of the things that can happen. Too common for that to happen. Like You have to be really late for it to happen, but you can be... If you are a little too late, you'll end up not having enough of that momentum to go forward into battle in, and then you'll fall into the spikes instead. So... You'll see a lot of runners, instead of taking the battle and boost like straight into her, they'll do a hyper right after skipping the cutscene just in case they don't have enough momentum. Because hmm. it costs you like a few frames to do that if you already had the full momentum, but it's definitely worth it if you can't consistently um, get the cutscene at just the right moment. Okay, hold the phone, because Siege is on remarkable pace right now. He is about to... Is he going to finish? Not quite, but he's going to be barely over 20 minutes when he finishes Reflection. Yeah. Like 20.01? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so he'll wow. need, like... He'll need... Like, he, he probably... <gasps> is, he can't... Oh. Yeah. His scoreboard in orbit. Death like, it, it's not gonna, it, he's definitely on pace for the best time of the league so far. Like, he would have to, in order to get world record, he would have to IL world record summit, but this is still a very good run for Teej. In fact, I think, I think Teej currently has the best time in the league, if I'm not mistaken. I know it was that way at the end of the league. He's uh, probably the died first... in the same spot as Teej did. And I think dying to that one spike uh, in the room scrub who was just in was the only like major death Teach has had so far. So yeah, I think so too. In fact, if he didn't have that, he would have he would have left reflection at sub twenty, which would have been <laughs> yeah, 
I probably would have just stopped talking because <laughs> it would be like, like, are we going to see a world record here? Are we going to see a sub 28 here? Like, are we, are we having this conversation right now? Because I mean, I'm down to have it, but probably not going to be saying a lot. And it's, it's just weird thinking that sub 28 is actually possible now. Because like, I mean, I, the, the meme still exists how sub 30 is impossible, but oh no, we, people really did used to think sub 30 was like, unattainable for humans back in the day but oh, then yeah. like we just things just got faster like corner boosts were discovered and then it got the sub 30 and then like demo dash was discovered and then it got the sub 29 and now with stuff like bubs drop we can actually get sub 28 mm -hmm. bubs drop and first gift of course i'm looking in chat it looks like it could be a 28 team with a good summit also, someone mentioned that the Getting Over It runners are actually starting to run <laughs> Celeste. So that's really interesting. That game, I'm not going to comment about it because I'll get angry. I have the same feelings <laughs> about Getting Over It as I do with Golden Ridge. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's the um, second best game about climbing a mountain. <laughs> I would say shots fired, but I mean, where is the lie? <laughs> Yeah, like, I feel like Tej, like, if Tej wanted to pull something out of his back pocket on Summit, this would be the time to do it. Because I feel like that he could go for, like, it, I don't know, I feel like it's attainable if he just plays this one very clean. He's playing very flawlessly. I think we're getting a sync here. Oh yeah, we are syncing, so. So, like. I'm just gonna say, Teach, if you got if you got a little something in your back pocket to save a couple seconds, if you want to go for a little risky, you know, I'm not gonna be mad at you for it. But I won't be mad if you don't go for it either, because you know. So you can see, I love this strat too. I'm actually, this is another thing that I'm trying to incorporate in my own run, trying to get that cycle skip. Right, and someone in chat quickly asked, what is bird skip? Uh, it's basically being able to skip out of prologue, the prologue cutscene where... Yeah, it's, it's not a strat or anything, it's just you can skip that cutscene now, and it's a huge change that was added in a recent patch. Yeah, it's like a 15, 16 second uh, time save. Well, it, it, it was it. until it got patched out, now it's closer to 12. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that's like, right, because back with when the... it was frame perfect, it was yeah. like a 15 second save because the you can do it text didn't appear then. Which is important in my opinion. Yeah. It's like that, that, I love that screen. I was like, please don't get rid of that screen. <laughs> yeah, Matt it's Noel, still a little don't... awkward when the you can do it appears while the music is still going, but it's still a yeah. nice touch. Wow, he just woof, burning, burning yeah. through. If he was able, if he uh, had some practice in that uh, auto scroller skip, he might even be able to world record with that. But he probably hasn't been practicing yeah. it a ton. I did speak with Teach uh, prior to the race, and he said he didn't have anything up his sleeve. So I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold him to his word. And then you know, as most people know, Teach is. Like, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. Teach is like the king of consistency. Like every run. You know, he just hits these these same tried and true, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it strats over and over and over again. And it's just like almost second nature every time you see him run the game. Now, that isn't to say that if he has mishap, he has something in his back pocket to save a couple, you know, a few frames here or there. But for the most part, just like, listen, go with what you know. And like, arguably, that is the best strat. <laughs> like, especially yeah. in a race setting. I mean, like that right there, that is somewhat new i know he was he used to go for it um in a couple runs ago but you know that's like the newest addition whoa to... that was a really tight ultra run from scrubbler uh but yeah you kind you kind of have two different runner kinds of runners in celeste you have the ones who um just keep practicing the strats that work well and just keep doing it until you can do them like 100 percent of the time that's kind of the uh, group that he is in and then you have the ones who like 
bring out all of the crazy strats. And even if they die a couple of times, the amount of time they save with the strat uh, mostly makes up for it. And that, that that's kind of like a like, like kind Flitter. of narrow or Flit Derby side. Yeah. Like you can tell by Flit Derby some of best that he is really good with some of the fastest strats in the game. Mm-hmm. And actually, it's interesting because in Nero's previous race, I, I noticed he was doing a lot more consistent in safe strats rather than going for broke. Now, that could be because he was going against uh, Msushi and their times were so close, but um, in the end, it did kind of pay off for him. Yeah, Msushi, so he was I was able think, to take those races. Like, I, I haven't watched enough of him to really make a definitive statement on it, but I kind of feel like he's also kind of in the consistency group. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a little bit of both. I know he he yeah. will go for some of more um, aggressive strats, especially if he feels like he can go for it. I mean, we saw that with the um, the auto scroll, the skip skip in a uh, two thousand, because he he was going for that in all three races, and I think he it j basically was just like, I'm gonna add this to my to my skill set, so we're just gonna go for it. Wait, chat's going. Oh. Nuts. Did I miss something a, a minute ago? Yeah, I'm not sure. yeah, apparently something new happened. I must have missed it. Oh, I think they were talking about the, the game freeze and then the auto score skip skip, which we did not see, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, maybe it was the reverse hyper uh, in 2500 from the second red bubble that might have oh, been it because again like i said that's like yeah he went for it okay. in his uh <laughs> that's probably... again that's like for a tjh that is a quote-unquote new approach to that room yeah I th i'm pretty what? sure the margin of difference to the corner boost is like so small that he might just be doing it for swag at this point but i'm not sure maybe he is so consistent with it that he actually does it Right now, Scrubboard getting in on that door skip, getting that. Heading into 2500 here. Now, Scrubboard had to hang up here on the very end of the screen. So, we're going to see if yeah. he's going to have that on his mind. I wouldn't be too surprised if he, if he even just stuck to the left wall. No, he's going for it. Okay, get the he gets one. It. Definitely seen a little bit of a hesitation on his second dash there, just to make sure he got enough height. Because, again, that. It's it's recoverable, but it's hard. Like you have to catch that dash block um, on the way up, and then you can't dash <laughs> again. Mm -hmm. like, look at TGH right now. He's on sub twenty eight thirty pace right now. Yeah, which and... would have been world record not long ago. Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah. A little hang up there, but he's gonna get it. I think this is gonna be his first twenty. Clocking at twenty eight twenty, folks. I believe. That is the first sub-29 that we have in the... With an 818 Summit as well. I Nicely played. I think that's the fastest time we've seen in a race setting in Celeste, period. I think so, too. And a Scarf Lord moving along here. About to approach Updraft. Now, we are running a little behind schedule, folks. So, um, unfortunately, we won't have too much time for interviews because we're going to be jumping right into um, Chai Kitty versus Evans fight as well, which actually I will be uh, on comms for that too. I'll be joined by, I believe, Artie Walsh, but, you know, the trend right now, <laughs> as I've seen, is uh, <laughs> every time that I'm up on the mic, Programmatic manages to, to come save me. So that could happen. I did see I think, Artie Walsh in chat. Yeah, though, I did so. see Walsh in chat, and I'll, I'll definitely... Uh... I'll leave it up to him if he's still here. But I do have some work I probably should be doing. <laughs> All right, so now Scrubboard getting to flag number 10. Are we going to see a diagonal dash here at flag 10? Scrubboard, what are we going to do here? Nope. No, he's <laughs> just going to do it the safer way. No demo at flag 9 either. I'm like, I'm just trying to name off like the most <laughs> reckless things that you can do. <laughs> We're still making great progress here. It's not going to be a sub 30, unfortunately, but I think he's still on pace to get a sub 31 here, barring any drama. 
happening on this final stretch of gameplay here. Alright, so we got... Oh! Ooh. Just dashing straight up there. You probably expected the feather to die out before you reached that point because... You need to have some really solid feather movement in order to get into that gap without dropping out of the feather. He's able to get it second try here. Bringing it home, getting into flag number one. And it looks to be 30, 40? Yeah. Yep, 30, 40, or maybe on the dot. Let's see. Not quite. Nope. <laughs> Close enough, though. All right. GG's to Scrub Lord and to TGH. TGH sweeping the set, walking away with four more points. Him and Nero are currently tied for first. But we have a lot of races left, folks. So, again, we are going to have to cut this one short because we are a little behind schedule. But that is quite all right because we got more Celeste on the way, you guys. I'm excited. I hope you guys are, too. Be sure to stick around. And tell your friends, post up on the social media, and um, yeah, we will catch you guys. Well, I will catch you guys in like two seconds, so yeah, <laughs> I got the but um, at this point. uh, hopefully, we'll all be here in just a moment. Yep, so uh, GG's, but it was definitely GG's. fun commentating, and this was a very exciting race. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks again, as always, programmatic. I'm pretty sure that we will uh, meet once again on the commentator mic at some point, yeah, for and sure. uh. Yeah, we're gonna wrap this one up and then we'll move right along to Evan's fight versus Chai Kitty. I'll see you guys over there. Yep. Stick around. <laughs>